Strike missions, raids, dungeons, fractals and meta events. You've reached level 80 and what endgame content should you do now? And where should you start? Let me take you through all the endgame content in Guild Wars 2. I'll tell you what they are, where to find them, their difficulty, the profit and how time consuming they are. My name is Kyo and let's get into the video. Before you hop into raids, strike missions or anything else, you want to do these three things first. When you reach level 80, the first thing you should do is finish the Guild Wars 2 main story if you haven't already. Why exactly? Well, the story takes you through the world of Tyria and this gives you the opportunity to unlock extra waypoints. This comes in handy whenever you want to return to a specific place for a collection or an event. And of course, the main story lays a great foundation for the stories that can be experienced in the expansions and living world seasons. Completing some of these story instances even grants you new armor or weapons. This allows you to gear up your character for future end game activities that you want to participate in. So as you might have guessed, completing the main and other stories in Guild Wars 2 is very beneficial. Next up, if you have the expansions, I highly encourage you to unlock elite specializations that the expansions grant you access to. In short, elite specializations allow you to select another trait line in your trait panel. These elite specialization trait lines are enhancements for your current profession or class. Using these also grants you access to new skills and another weapon that you can use. You can simply unlock these by completing hero challenges in expansion maps. So once you completed the story and unlocked your elite specializations, it's time to gear up. When you are getting ready for endgame content, it is recommended to have at least exotic gear. You can recognize these armor sets, weapons and trinkets by looking at their orange border or their orange text. These armor sets can be obtained in various ways. They can be acquired by participating in meta events and dungeons, which we will get into in a minute, but you can also get them from the trading post, a number of merchants or by crafting them. I suggest crafting your first exotic armor set. However, this requires you to have a crafting level of 400. To reach level 400 for a specific discipline, it'll take you a few hours and a bit of gold. But before you start crafting, make sure to look for a build on Snowcrows, Discreticize, Meta Battle, Guild Gen or any other source. These websites have great builds for endgame content and also show what gear, weapons and trinkets you have to use. And once you know that, you can get into crafting. In most cases, I'd recommend and getting ascended gear. Ascended gear is slightly better than exotic gear and can be recognized by their pink borders or their pink text. However, this gear is hard to acquire, so I won't let this hold you back from endgame content. If you want to craft ascended gear anyway, make sure to check out my video on the subject. Alright, let's get into the actual content. The first endgame activity can be done everywhere in the world. The activity I'm talking about are meta events and world bosses. This is the easiest and least time consuming bit of endgame content you can do. It does not require specific gear and it does not require you to have any of the expansions. However, there are some new meta events and world bosses that are tied to specific areas in the expansions. When you were leveling up, you've probably participated in a meta event before. These pop up at specific times or whenever players on a map complete a number of tasks. On some maps, there are grand and significant meta events that grant great loot, achievements and gold. Especially the meta events in the Heart of Thorns expansion can be very profitable. Usually there are a significant number of players participating in these events, so you're never alone and there will always be someone willing to explain specific mechanics about a meta event or a world boss. To find and participate in these events, you can easily find a timetable on the official Guild Wars to wiki and you can easily access the timetable by typing slash wiki event timers or slash wiki et in the chat and pressing enter. This opens up your default browser and takes you directly to the correct page. Here you can also find chat codes that directly take you to the closest waypoint near the event. You can also find groups that organize so-called meta event trains that do a number of events in a row. You can also find these groups in the looking for group panel and this is also a great way to get to know new people. Then there are strike missions. Strike missions are short 10 player boss battles. These strike missions are considered to be a bridge between open world content like the meta events we just talked about and raids. The missions take instances from the living world and the Icebreak Saga stories and turn them into difficult battles. This makes them recognizable and accessible for everyone. 
Strike missions are fairly short. They won't take you longer than just a few minutes. Some strike missions are easy and can be done on almost every character with half decent gear, whilst others require you to have the best gear possible. For example, the Shiver Peak Pass, Freynair of Jormag and the Voice and Claw of the Fallen do not require much team coordination or gear, whilst the Whisper of Jormag, the Bone Skinner and the Harvest Temple are difficult and require coordination and good gear. Strike missions are exclusive to players that own the Path of Fire expansion and beyond. Once you have completed a strike mission you get a number of shards that you can exchange for rewards in Eye of the North. There are also daily strikes that give you an extra reward once you complete them. The more difficult strikes often require players to bring a kill proof, often abbreviated as KP. When players ask for that, you know that this is a very experienced group, so you might not be able to join them on your first go. To join a strike mission, head on over to Eye of the North for the Icebird Saga strike missions or head on over to Arborstone for the End of Dragon strike missions. Then head on over to the Looking for Group panel and join a group for a strike mission. It's that easy. And you've probably heard about dungeons, right? If not, let's get into that a little bit because they are a great way to acquire new gear and specific runes. Dungeons are 5 player instances where you have to make your way through a number of enemies or puzzles to reach a final boss. These dungeons were in the game when it was first released in 2012 and do not require any expansion to play. So it is one of the oldest pieces of endgame content in the game. There are 8 dungeons in the world of Guild Wars 2 all scattered around the world. All of them have different stories and paths you can follow. In order to unlock a dungeon, you must reach a specific level. Some require you to be level 80, while the first one, the Escalonian Catacombs, only requires you to be level 30. You first have to complete the story mode of a dungeon before you can play the explorable paths. Once you've done that, you and your party can usually select one of three paths. Each of the three paths have their own story and bosses attached to them. This means that you can complete a dungeon multiple times whilst not playing through the same content over and over again. A single dungeon instance should take you about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. However, it can take you a bit longer, but this depends on the experience of your party. It also does not require you to have specific gear. It is actually a great way to acquire gear for your character. Once you complete a dungeon, it rewards you with a currency called Tales of Dungeon delving. The currency can be exchanged for gear and runes in Lion's Arch. The tales of dungeon delving make it easy for new players to acquire exotic gear and specific runes. Take for example the runes of the nightmare. These runes are often used in condition or damage over time builds, and these runes can be acquired by exchanging those tales of dungeon delving. Joining a dungeon is easy. Like strike missions, you head on over to the looking for group panel and look for a group there. Each dungeon has their own little tab where you can find a group for a specific dungeon. Don't see a listing just yet? Create one yourself. Team composition does not really matter anyway. Just let them know you are doing the dungeon on the story or explorable mode. Although dungeons are great for getting your first set of exotic armor, there might not always be a lot of people around for a specific dungeon. This is mainly because dungeons are not very lucrative for veteran players. You will see them sporadically though. But don't worry, I would highly recommend doing them and I do them myself from time to time to get specific runes. Next up are Dragon Response Missions. Dragon Response Missions are a more niche piece of endgame content. The Dragon Response Missions are small story-like scenarios, similar to dungeons. They have their typical story-like objectives and a boss at the end. Dragon Response Missions can either be done solo or with a party of five. If you want to do it fast, I'd suggest having a party. They are always better than the NPCs. The missions are very accessible and do not really require a specific gear to complete. A single Dragon Response Mission should take about 15 to 20 minutes to complete, so it can be done easily in between your daily tasks on an alt that has sub-optimal gear. The Dragon Response missions do require the Path of Fire expansion though. It is niche content and therefore it is not as well populated as raids, fractals or strike missions, but it can reward some good materials and unique weapon skins. Definitely worth playing if you're looking for mid-tier materials or some new drip for your character. Joining a Dragon Response mission is easy, head on over to Eye of the North and walk up to the portal at the back of the outpost. Here you can select whether you want to join solo, join a random group or you want to bring your own party of players. If you want to bring your own party, it works a little different than other endgame content. Head on over to the looking for group panel and navigate to Central Tyria. Under the party tab, you can create a group for a specific dragon response mission. Now let's get into the harder stuff. Next up are Fractals of the Mists. 
Fractals are a series of mini dungeons that increase in difficulty. You can enter these fractals with a party of five and they do not require any expansion to play. However, in later levels it can be expected to bring a build that requires an expansion. When you first enter a fractal you'll have to start at level 1 and once you complete that you can progress to level 2 and so forth. The maximum level is 100 so you have plenty of fractals to grind through. In later levels these fractals get significantly harder. In higher fractal levels the player will get a damage over time effect called agony. At first agony does not really deal that much damage, you can easily outheal it. However, when you progress in difficulty, Agony can kill you in a second or two and you won't be able to outheal it. To overcome this effect and be able to clear higher level fractals, a player must have Ascended Armor and Agony Infusions. These infusions are applied to Ascended Armor in order to protect yourself from Agony. The infusions dampen the effect of the damage over time effect. These Agony Infusions are obtained after you successfully finished a fractal, but you can also buy them from the trading post. A single fractal can take up to 15 to 30 minutes of your time. This highly depends on your party's experience and the particular fractal you're going to complete. The gear you need in later fractals, Ascended gear is somewhat hard to obtain and this is due to the fact that this is one of the better armor tiers in Guild Wars 2. If you want to get it yourself, check out my video about the subject. The rewards in Fractals of the Mists are great. You can easily sell the loot you obtain from Fractals of the Mists for a lot of gold. Completing Fractals also grants you Fractal encryptions which can be opened or sold on the trading post. If you are convinced to join a Fractal, then here's how to find a group for it. The entrance of the Fractals of the Mists can be found at the southern part of Lion's Arch. To find a party, simply navigate to the Looking for Group panel and open the Fractals of the Mists tab. Here you can find different tabs for each tier of the Fractals of the Mists. Like most MMOs, Guild Wars 2 also has raids. Raids are 10 player encounters that require specific team setups to complete. Raids also require at least the Heart of Thorns expansion or the Path of Fire expansion. Raids are divided into wings. These wings all have about 4 encounters. Each encounter has its own unique mechanics and requires specific tactics to complete. The raid wings are also tied to specific expansions. The earlier raids are tied to the Heart of Thorns expansion, the later raids are tied to the Path of Fire expansion and possible future raids will be tied to the End of Dragons expansion. In contrast to Fractals of the Mists, it is not required to have Ascended gear to complete a raid. Exotic gear will suffice. However, I do recommend bringing Ascended gear for that extra bit of damage or support. A single raid wing will take you about 30 to 60 minutes to complete. Like Fractals of the Mists, this highly depends on your group's experience. If you are entirely new to raiding, then it might take you even longer than those 60 minutes to complete. But what does raiding give you in terms of rewards? For finishing an encounter, you will gain gold, an exotic weapon, magnetite shards and legendary insights. The last two are the most important rewards. The magnetite shards can be exchanged for ascended armor and for legendary armor components. The same goes for legendary insights. However, these legendary insights are often used to show as proof of your skill and dedication. This is the KP or kill proof that we discussed in the strike mission section of this video. Many more experienced groups in raids, strikes and even some fractals ask you to show your legendary insights before you are allowed to join their group. Joining a raid is similar to joining other groups. Open the looking for group panel and navigate to the raid tab. Here you will find listings for different raid wings or encounters. Most of the time this also shows the legendary insights that are required to join the group. Since raids require good group coordination it is advised to start raiding with a group of people you already know. They can teach you the ropes of each encounter. Don't have any friends or a guild? Join the raid training initiative or any other discord server. These groups teach new players how to face specific encounters and raid wings. Alright, these are the most common bits of endgame content in Guild Wars 2. There is so much other content to play at level 80, however, the ones mentioned here are the most popular. You liked the video? Give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more Guild Wars 2 content. Don't forget to share this video with your guildies if it was helpful and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!